welcome back. The National Judicial Council at its 83rd meeting constituted a committee to investigate various allegations against 15 judicial officers across the country. We must accept that acts of misconduct of a few rub off on the rest of the judiciary and create the impression that all judicial officers have their hands soiled with the process of corruption. That's the wake-up call, or perhaps a good way to hit the nail on the head. Obviously, the Chief Justice of Nigeria is not unaware of recent developments in the judiciary, especially the calls for reforms and the need for that arm of government to effectively play its role as the last hope of the common man. We must accept that acts of misconduct of a few rub off on the rest of the judiciary and create the impression that all judicial officers have their hands soiled with the process of corruption. Let me be clear here. It is not going to be business as usual for the few unscrupulous elements in our midst. That right act may have also come in handy at a time the judiciary needs everything possible to regain its place of pride. Several blows had been dealt on that arm of government in recent times, from accusations of corruption to petitions against judicial officers and deliberate delay of justice. Now, 13 judges, including two chief justices, are to face a panel over misconduct practices. That is the latest of the scandal trailing the Nigerian judiciary. In October 2016, the DSS in the Sting operation arrested six senior judges over corruption allegations. Some of them were tried, stripped of their judicial duties temporarily, and later acquitted of all charges. They are Justice Sylvester Nguta and Justice Inyang Okoro, both of the Supreme Court, Justice Adeni Demola and Rita Ophelia Jumogobia, Justice Hidiazira Ngajiwa, Justice Musa Kuria, all from the Federal High Court, and Justice Agbadu James Fishim of the National Industrial Court of Nigeria. Any judicial officer found wanting will be dealt with decisively and shown the way out swiftly. The EFCC is one of the few agencies fighting corruption in the country, but it needs the judiciary for it to be more effective. Now, the Chief Justice of Nigeria has identified the need to help speed up trial for looters of the country's economy with the setting up of a committee headed by Justice Ayo Salami, a retired president of the Court of Appeal. I am determined to redeem the unfa unfairly battered image of the judiciary. The setting up of the committee is still a subject of debate. It might as well bring about a much needed change or otherwise. What many Nigerians want, however, is total judicial reforms that will bring back the glory days of the judiciary. And finally, a former petroleum minister, Mrs. Daisy Alice Medweke, has asked the Federal High Court in Lagos to be joined in a suit filed by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, against Senior Advocate of Nigeria, Dele Belgori, and a former Minister of National Planning, Professor Abubakar Slimane. These and other stories coming up shortly. A former Petroleum Minister, Mrs. Dizani Allison Madurke, has asked the Federal High Court in Lagos to be joined in a suit filed by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission against Senior Advocate of Nigeria, Mohamed Dele Belgore, and former Minister of National Planning, Professor Abubakar Suleiman. At the resumed hearings, lawyer representing Mrs. Dizani, Obin Naonya, stated that in the chart presented by the EFCC, she was charged in counts one to four but was not made a defendant. He added that her application is to enable her to defend the allegations in all four counts. The prosecution counsel opposed the allegation on the ground that he had not been served. Justice Rilwan Aikawa therefore adjourned the case till October 30th to hear the application. Meanwhile, Justice Aikawa adjourned the trial for the EFCC to respond to an objection made by the defence counsel over the admissibility of a computer-generated document tendered by the EFCC's witness, Usman Zakari. The witness, who is an investigator for the EFCC, stated in the course of investigation that he discovered emails between the managing director of a commercial bank and the son of the former petroleum minister, showing a list of beneficiaries to about 37 billion naira allegedly shared by Alison Madureke to some individuals in 36 states during the 2015 general elections. 
Senior advocate of Nigeria, Mohamed Dele Belgore, and former Minister of National Planning, Professor Bubakar Suleiman, are accused of directly taking possession of the sum and conspiring to make cash payments of 450 million naira, which exceeded the amount authorized by law without going through a financial institution. Meanwhile, the federal government says it will bring former Minister of Petroleum Resources, Mrs. Diziani Alison Madureke, back to the country to face corruption charges when necessary. The Minister of Justice and Attorney General of the Federation, Abubakar Malami, believes Alison Madureke's extradition is not necessary at this time since the UK government is already investigating her. The trial of a former Chief of Air Staff, retired Air Marshal Adesola Amusu, and two other top-ranking officers of the Air Force continued at the Federal High Court in Lagos. The prosecution witness from the EFCC gave details of how the accused persons allegedly diverted 21 billion naira from the Air Force account into the personal account. An EFCC investigating officer, Tosin Wobo, alleges that Amosu and his co-accused diverted the set sum through several companies which they registered personally but which had no transaction or contract with the Nigerian Air Force. The investigating officer also revealed that all the accounts had a single accounts officer at a commercial bank where they were domiciled. Apart from retired Air Marshal Adeshola Musun, others are the former Chief of Accounts and Budgeting, Air Vice Marshal Jacob Adigu, and a former Director of Finance and Budget, Air Commodore Lugbenga Badebo. Justice John Soho of the Federal High Court Abuja has recused himself from the trial of eight Boko Haram suspects arraigned in his court. At the resumed trial of the suspects, Justice Soho announced his withdrawal following an application by one Abu Musab al banawi and seven others asking that their case be transferred from his court on the grounds of alleged bias. al banawi who was a spokesman of the sect and the seven other suspects, are facing trial at the Abuja Division of the Federal High Court for the alleged murder of five foreigners who were abducted from a construction site in Kebi State in 2011. The suspects are also accused of alleged culpability in the murder of seven other foreigners in Bornu State after abducting them from another construction site in Bochi State in February 2013 and taken into Tembisa Forest. In Ibadan, a federal high court has sentenced a professor of agriculture and former director general of the Institute of Agriculture, Research and Training, Professor Benjamin Ogumodede, to 40 years in prison without an option of fine. Sentenced along with him are the chief accountant of the institute, Zakius Tejumola, and another staff, Adenekon Clement. According to the 16-count charge filed by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, they were set to have diverted 177 million naira out of 600 million received as subvention from the federal government to pay salaries of workers and execute projects in the institute. Delivering the judgment, the presiding judge, Justice Ayo Emanuel, said the decision will serve as a deterrent for those who mismanage public funds. And with that, we come to the end of this week's edition on Law Weekly. I want to sincerely thank you for being a part of the program. You can send your comments to the platforms showing on your screen. I'm Victoria Ido. Enjoy the rest of the day.